All right, this is the biblical case against oneness. The theology of oneness basically denies the biblical Godhead and says that there is no separation, there is no distinction. God is just one and he just manifests himself in, in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And this is unbiblical. Now, I've done some stuff attacking the Trinitarian uh, position that God is three separate persons and that there are three persons, but they're one person. And you're, it's ridiculous. But oneness theology is also heretical too. You see, you have this false dichotomy of either Trinitarian or oneness. Neither one of them is right. They're both heretical. And here are some verses that clearly prove that oneness is also just as heretical as Trinitarianism. So let's get right into it. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, then the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. God is the head of Jesus Christ. You know, proving a, a hierarchy in the Godhead. There is a hierarchy. You know, other verses I'm going to show you where the Son is actually submitting to the Father and bringing the kingdom up to the Father. Very, very clear in Scripture. Acts chapter 7, verse 55 to 56. Um, but he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked, stead, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened up and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. So we see a separation there. Jesus, the Son of God, is at the right hand of God the Father. It's a separation. Oneness theology, if oneness was correct, this wouldn't be possible. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 24. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the, up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when, uh, sorry, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. So we see right here, the Son of God is bringing the kingdom up to God the Father. You know, this is at the end of the thousand year reign of Christ. So again, we see a separation there. We see the, uh, the Son, basically the body and soul are separate. The Son is bringing the kingdom up to God the Father. It's a separation there. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 28. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son of Man, or then shall, sorry, then shall the Son also be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. So we see right here the Son is actually submitting to God the Father. Jesus, the Son of God, is submitting to God the Father. Again, a separation and distinction in the Godhead. Uh, Luke chapter, here's, a really, here's some really, here's the uh, next two verses I'm going to show you are really, really good verses that really make a problem for oneness theology. Luke chapter 3, verse 21 and 22. Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus was also being baptized and praying uh, the, the heaven was open, sorry, not good at reading on a computer, and the Holy Ghost descended in bodily shape like a dove upon him, and a voice from heaven uh, which said, Sorry, and a verse came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. So we see all three parts of the Godhead separate. The Jesus is on earth. The, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, comes down like a dove. He wasn't a dove. You know, the, the paintings picture him as a dove. He came down like a dove. That's what the verse says. And the Father's in heaven, you know, basically praising the Son. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. We see separation there. The three parts are separate. Body and soul, spirit, because here's how it works. God has a body, Jesus Christ. God has a soul, God the Father, and God has a spirit, the Holy, Holy Spirit. That's how it works, three and one, 1 John 5, 7. Uh, Mark chapter one, verse number nine to 11. Here's another good one that makes a problem for oneness. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth, Nazareth, of, Gal sorry, Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Just like in the book of, just like in Luke, we see the three parts of the Godhead, they're separate and they're actually interacting with each other. The father is busy praising the son and the Holy Ghost comes down and lands, you know, lands on the, the uh, son's shoulder. You know, the separation of the Godhead. Oneness theology uh, denies this essentially. They say that God is one, he just manifests himself in three different ways or whatever. It doesn't make any sense. Now, God is one. Don't get me wrong. You know, Jesus in John John 10, 30, Jesus says, I and my Father are one. You know, other verses like in John 14, I think it's 9 to 12, Jesus talks about how the Father's in him and he's in the Father. So, Jesus and the Father are one. But they're not one in the sense that they're just two different manifestations of one spirit or something like that. That's That's not biblical, it's, it's heretical, uh, as shown by these verses, proving a, a separation in the Godhead. So don't be deceived by Trinitarianism, and also don't be deceived by oneness theology. Neither one of them is correct. Both of them are, are heretical. So anyway, God bless you. Goodbye.